President von der Leyen, thank you very much for uh, being here with us uh, at the presentation of our local and regional barometer today. It's a great privilege for us Europeans to know that a leader of your caliber uh, is in charge of our union today during these very turbulent times. And I want you to know that when it comes to the Committee of the Regions, myself and all my colleagues, we are here to help. We are here to bring Europe closer to its people. And so this coalition that we are starting, that we have already started between the Committee of the Regions and the Commission shall go on. And I think that in the future, when we look back to these moments of this new alliance in Europe, we will be really happy for having started this close collaboration. So thank you very much again for finding the time and investing in the regions and the cities of the European Union. Let me please move on now and give, to the floor, to, uh, give the floor to Mr. Olger Geblevich from the EPP. Olger, you have the floor. Thank you. Dear President von der Leyen, I don't know. A warm welcome on behalf of the EPP group in the COR and thank you for uh, very important words you address us today. President, I believe all members of this House have also listened attentively to your State of Union address. Although we were not mentioned by name, we felt addressed by ambitious list of policies. We are ready to deliver on them together with you. As I have the honor to be a president of West Pomeranian region on the Polish-German border, I have no doubts that cross-border health cooperation, of which you spoke, can be achieved only with the support of border regions. The data in common European health data space will be inevitably managed by local and regional authorities. The ambitious revision of energy and climate legislation needs to be climate proof by also region proof in order to meet the ambitious emission reduction targets not only in drafting but also in the implementation. The Green Deal will be investment strategy if the regions embrace it and receive tailored assistance with the concrete projects. We also glad to see that the next generation EU plan is in its core based on the concept of the social market economy. It puts people first. The social market economy has taken us out of the other crises during the 20th century. It is a concept deeply rooted in the central right tradition and brings together values of individual freedom, solidarity, and subsidiarity. And it is subsidiarity that will make next generation EU a success. Therefore, its design should be targeted to the needs of regions. So I'm very glad that in your speech today, you underlined that the national recovery and resilience plans will heal our economies only if they are drafted in close partnership with the regional and local authorities. The annual local and regional barometer which we present today comes not out of criticism, but as complementing tool to fine tune the policies which you outlined. The message is clear. This crisis has affected our regions in an uneven way, and therefore, response should be tailored to the specificities in each one of them. Dear President, we are regional 
and local politicians. And we see the scale of the COVID in the activity and, the, and in the eyes of our citizens daily. We make no illusions that recovery will be fast or painless. We know that after fear and grief of pandemic go away, the frustration of economic downturn will shake Europe. And if we don't convince citizens today that we work based on their needs, we will face a wave of Eurosceptic opinions tomorrow. That is why we need to base our policy choices on the hard data from regions, and the barometer guides us in that. This will provide us with additional legitimacy to defend the recovery measures in difficult times. I hope that today, together with you, we are setting a milestone for the cooperation between the COR and Commission and the link with our citizens. Thank you very much for your presence today. Thank you very much, Olga. The floor now to Kata Tuto from the PES. Dear President of the European Commission, I am very honored to address you on behalf of the PES group uh, from my city, Budapest, where I serve as Deputy Mayor. And I was also and still am chairing the response group for the COVID crisis. I don't want to repeat anything that has been said, but uh, going back to the beginnings, one of the most challenging things were that we were all in the dark city leaders facing something we've never seen before without uh, sufficient data and without experience. And in these hard times, one of uh, the biggest help was the network of cities that we could call each other, we could see all the decisions made and that we could share the experiences we had. This, this was the thing to, to hold on to and I'm really grateful for that. We had to be really quick in acting, um, making tough decisions on closing, lockdown our cities to protect the most vulnerable. But those decisions of reopening was even harder decisions so that everybody else can stay alive. Uh, while shutting down, we were talking about cities had to work, uh, public transport had to run, waste had to be collected, and it's easy to see that you cannot drive a bus or collect trash uh, from a home office. We cities uh, were in the front line facing the social disaster, people losing their only income completely from one day to another. And it was a lot of cities who then could introduce a basic income. We had to be quick in rethinking our public spaces, closing down spaces and opening up new, safer spaces. We had to rethink mobility, rethink safety and rethink elderly care. But in this COVID crisis, a lot of new dimensions of inequalities emerged. Like for homeschooling, we know a lot of people for whom it uh, went well but we know a lot of families for whom homeschooling was a nightmare, a disaster, meant for a lot of children being dropped out of school for months, highlighting inequalities in access to technology, but also it meant for a lot of children cutting off the only resource, the only way to get a proper meal a day. I always have to stress that one child out of four in the European Union is today at risk of poverty. Also staying at home, it means really different situation for a family with a one room apartment on the eighth floor and a family in a big house in a suburb. So we are calling for a European deal for housing to support local and regional authorities in financing affordable and sustainable housing. We've been talking about access to healthcare. I come from a country where we were not lacking ventilators. We have today 10 times more ventilators then we have doctors who can actually operate them. So there is a strong need for a European public health strategy to build a stronger European health union. Our president was talking about the gender, the clear gender dimension of the crisis. We usually say that poverty has a women's face and so does the COVID crisis. 
women did play and we are playing an outsized role responding to the crisis. It's not just that women are the majority of the frontline workers in healthcare and nurses, but the majority of the low paid workers and the majority of people with caring responsibilities, paid and unpaid. We were seeing increases in domestic abuse and there are still member states who are not implementing the, conven the Istanbul Convention, which is as important as ever. And as a Hungarian, let me address another fundamental issue which deserves to be treated with more responsibility. It's about European values and the rule of law. We agreed that there is no more room for compromise for governments when it comes to the respect of rule of law. European values are not for sale. But governments does, doesn't equal with its citizens. And we should not be blamed for the actions of our governments. As before, the Visegrad Four mayors were calling. Today, Hungarian mayors, leaders of three cities, are addressing the leaders of uh, the European Union, the Parliament and the Commission, to raise their voice for their citizens. We are calling for more directly accessible European funds to strengthen those who are in the front line of the pandemic. Because stronger cities and regions are not just important when facing an economic crisis or a pandemic, but they are also these local democracies are important pillars of democracies and they can be very important pillars of rebuilding a democracy. So thank you again for your attention and thank you for your presence today. Thank you very much, Kata. I would like to give the floor now to Ulrika Landergren from Renew Europe. Tack. Först vill jag tacka er för ordförande von der Leyen för att ni har tagit er tid för att möta oss i regionkommittén. Vi genomgår nu den kanske mest annorlunda och konstiga tid som ingen i vår generation trodde att vi skulle få vara med om. Som kommunpolitiker i Kungsbacka har jag fått agera inom flera områden. I min kommun har vi klarat oss relativt bra. Sveriges största bekymmer under pandemin har varit att skydda våra äldre på våra äldreboenden. Och här kommer några slutsatserna. De äldreboenden som vi har haft välutbildad personal på har klarat sig mycket bättre. De som har haft många tillfälligt anställda eller timmanställda har haft mycket högre dödstal. Vi måste uppvärdera vår personal och se till att vi har rätt utbildningsnivå för de som vårdar de allra sköraste personerna. Vi har haft brist på skyddsmaterial. Vi prioriterade sjukvården före äldreboenden då det inte fanns material att tillgå. Här kan vi dra slutsatsen att vi både på nationell och EU-nivå måste vara mycket bättre förberedda och gemensamma beredskapslager av mediciner och material. En återstart av Europa är helt nödvändig och den behöver komma igång så fort som möjligt. Det är långsiktigt hållbara initiativ som kommer att göra Europa starkare. Jag ska ta några exempel som jag tror kommer att ha betydelse för vår omställning och där EU-pengar kan göra rejäl nytta. Omställning av hela fordonsindustrin. I Västsverige är vi beroende av fordonsindustrin. De har nu identifierat stora behov av att kompetensväxla alla anställda. Bygga ny kunskap till ny teknik med batterier och elfordon. Vi kommer att fortsätta att transportera oss men på ett mycket mer miljövänligt sätt med elbussar, elbilar, självkörande bilar. Men för detta krävs det en avancerad kompetensutveckling av befintlig personal och ny innovativ kunskap på våra högskolor. I Västsverige satsar vi därför tillsammans med EU för att göra denna omställning på bredden och i ett högt tempo. Du nämnde själv den digitala klyftan, den får inte öka. Låt oss nu ta tillvara detta fantastiska tillfälle som vi har fått med pandemin att låta hela Europa arbeta uppkopplat på lika villkor. Vår uppgift måste vara att se till att alla får tillgång till den nya digitala tekniken. Jag vill också passa på att tacka fru ordförande von der Leyen för den tydliga ställning ni har tagit i HBTQ-frågor. I Renew Europe's grupp har vi med stor oro följt utvecklingen i Polen. 
där flera kommuner och regioner har antagit resolutioner som skapar ett klimat av diskriminering och möjlig förföljelse av hbtq-personer. Vi välkomnar den europeiska kommissionens beslut att stoppa finansieringen av värnortsprojekt till och med till dessa kommuner. Men vi vill gå ett steg längre och anser att ingen EU-finansiering bör beviljas myndigheter som inte delar EUs grundläggande värderingar. Min fråga till dig som president från Leyen är vad kan den europeiska kommissionen göra för att sätta ytterligare press på dessa myndigheter för att avskaffa dessa resolutioner? Om detta inte görs stoppa EU-bidrag till dessa lokala och regionala myndigheter. Och då tänker jag särskilt på den europeiska struktur- och investeringsfonderna. Jag vill tacka för uppmärksamheten. Thank you very much, Ulrika. I would like to give the floor now to Vladislav Portil from the ECR. Dziękuję bardzo, pani przewodnicząca, panie przewodniczący. W imieniu Europejskiej Grupy Konserwatystów i Reformatorów bardzo dziękuję. Usłyszeliśmy o ważnych sprawach i też decyzjach, które oczywiście doceniamy. Nasza grupa uważa, że Unia Europejska musi się skoncentrować na dwóch priorytetach. Mam tu na myśli bezpieczeństwo i gospodarkę. Równie ważnych tu kolejność nie ma znaczenia, ale też ważną sprawą jest taka uniwersalna zasada, która musi nam przyświecać, przyświecać czyli suwerenność krajów członkowskich. Po pierwsze bezpieczeństwo. Doceniamy te wszystkie wysiłki, która, które Komisja Europejska od samego początku koncentrowała się na badaniach naukowych, innowacjach mogących pomóc w walce koronawirusem, szczególnie w początkowym okresie pandemii. Mamy nadzieję, że ta ścisła współpraca Komisji Europejskiej Ekspertów doprowadzi do przełomu i w tych staraniach o, o szczepionkę, o oczywiście o lekarstwo, które by nam pomagało w tej walce ale by zapobiec kryzysowi humanitarnemu, sanitarnemu i także epidemiologicznemu, no konieczne jest efektywniejsze zarządzanie polityką migracyjną. E, musimy pamiętać o tym, że to niepostrzeżenie nam może uruć do dużego problemu. Tutaj podstawową odpowiedzią na ten kryzys migracyjny nie może być tylko unijny mechanizm relokacji. Wiedza o nim będzie powodowało, że coraz więcej imigrantów będzie się decydowało na tą niebezpieczną wyprawę przez morze, a regiony przygraniczne nie będą sobie mogły radzić z zapewnieniem bezpieczeństwa. Takim regionom jak Wyspa Sycylia, które znajdują się pod bardzo silną presją migracyjną, musi zostać udzielona większa pomoc medyczna, finansowa. Musimy się starać o jeszcze większe zabezpieczenie granic. Nie możemy się dziwić, gubernatorowi Sycylii, tylko musimy go po prostu wspierać. Drugi ważny aspekt to oczywiście gospodarka. Tutaj znajdujemy się w sytuacji, w której banki centralne zwiększają podaż pieniądza na wielką skalę, co zapewniło faktycznie stabilizację i takie względne poczucie bezpieczeństwa, ale jednocześnie musimy pamiętać o tych rosnących kosztach gospodarczych i kosztach życia mieszkańców, Tutaj to szybko, rekordowo szybko rośnie. Dlatego naszą szczególną uwagę zwróciły propozycje Komisji Europejskiej zawarte w pakcie klimatycznym i tu obawiamy się, że mogą one doprowadzić do wzrostu nie tylko cen energii. Apelujemy, żeby tutaj był balans między sprawami środowiskowymi i ekonomicznymi. Myślę, że Komisja Europejska ma na celu walkę z populizmem. Nie chcielibyśmy, aby no, te rosnące koszty do tego populizmu doprowadziły. Na koniec chciałbym zaapelować o poszanowanie suwerenności krajów oczywiście członkowskich i także samorządów terytorialnych w dziedzinach, które nam oczywiście są przypisane. Unię Europejską musimy reformować w oparciu o zasadę subsydiarności. Bardzo dziękuję, szanowni państwo. Thank you very much. The floor now to Kieran McCarthy from the EA Group. Kieran, you have the floor. On behalf of the European Alliance Group, uh, congratulations, Mr. President, on a, first of all, on a very insightful speech, and thanks for your work on it. Uh, and Madam President, uh, congratulations on your hard work, your energy and enthusiasm. It is true to say that you've chosen, chosen your commissioner team well, and they're also instilled with such latter traits. 
Um, I believe that I'm the second person from Cork in the south of Ireland to speak with you in the past two weeks. Uh, the first being Ireland's Taoiseach, our Prime Minister, Micheál Martin. And while he would have focused on the member state perspective, it is my firm belief um, that cities and regions and concepts of multi-level governance also need to be at the heart of the priorities and part of the passionate narrative and story outlined by in you in your recent State of the Union address and reiterated by, by you today. Many of the priorities are common challenges for over 95,000 local and regional authorities across Europe. The delivery of the Commission's ambitious targets can only be achieved in collaboration with the cities and regions. We must be at the heart of the delivery process and the COR will continue to collaborate with other EU institutions in the delivery of this vision. I'll bet we do wish for our work, the opportunities that go with such work and the strong added value connected to such work to be recognised more by those who lead the European project forward. The Committee of the Regions is also part of Team, Team Europe. We are more than just the opinions we produce. We are on the front line in building the future Europe. We are the story builders, the capacity builders, the strategy builders. We are the builders of the lighthouses of innovation. We build ideas from scratch and bring them to life. We are more than just the sum of our parts. If you empower the regions, the EU will be a success. My own group, the European Alliance group, um, continue to bring forward reasoned opinions and policy papers on topics ranging from rural revival to the conference in the future of Europe to the fallout from the collapse through COVID or, of our cultural and tourism industry. And certainly, next generation EU funding is welcome to try to solve some of the latter problems, as are the continued trialogues for cohesion policy. But the COR will lobby our hardest to get the best deal we can for our local and regional authorities. So the big question my group has this morning, Madam Commissioner, for you is how can we ensure that you include local and regional government in actively engaging more in the delivery of the EU project? Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Kieran. Let me now give the floor to Bernd Voss from the Greens group. Ja, sehr geehrte Präsidentin, sehr geehrter Herr Vorsitzender, sehr geehrter Herr Kommissar, die Corona-Krise hat sehr eindeutig gezeigt, wie wichtig es ist, dass Regionen, Städte und Gemeinden ein starkes Sprachrohr und ein starkes Netzwerk auf allen Ebenen haben. Und von Seiten der Grünen freuen wir uns natürlich auch über Ihre Erwartung, dass die Nationalstaaten, auch die Regionen und Gemeinden jetzt bei Next Generation angemessen beteiligen. Die Krise ist ein Brennglas für die Probleme in der Struktur und im System. Und das Ungleichgewicht reicht bis in die kleinsten Einheiten unserer Gesellschaft, bis in die Familien ein. Sie haben es sehr deutlich gemacht. Die große Herausforderung wird jetzt aber zugleich sein, eine schnelle Energiewende, Klimaschutz, unsere große und auch letztlich einzige wirtschaftliche und soziale Perspektive durchzutragen. Gemeinden, Städte und Regionen setzen sie aber letztlich um. Sie brauchen dabei extrem starken Rückhalt, Sie bräuchten daher auch mehr direkten Zugang zu EU-Fonds. Ja, das neue Klimagesetz ist ein Anfang. Die Beschlüsse des EU-Parlaments in der vergangenen Woche haben es noch mal erheblich verbessert. Und wir Grüne hoffen und erwarten, dass der Beschluss des Parlaments nicht abgeschwächt wird. Die EU muss glaubhaft, stark und mit konkreten Beispielen vorangehen. Dazu gehört, dass die Auswirkungen des globalen Handels am Ende regional gemeistert und auch gerechtfertigt werden müssen. Und es war daher sehr hilfreich, Frau Präsidentin, die Dringlichkeit eines qualifizierten Außenschutzes am Beispiel des Carbon Border Tax für klimaneutrale Stahlproduktion in der Debatte herauszubringen und zu stärken. Diese Qualifizierung brauchen wir in anderen Regionen und auch in anderen Handelsbereichen weltweit und auch im Agrarhandel. Verschließen wir uns nicht in den Augen vor den Konsequenzen unseres globalen Handelns und die Zaghaftigkeit und die Konsequenzen auch der Verweigerung. Ich nenne nur so als Beispiele vor der Haustür die Probleme im Mittelmeer Moria. Und gleichzeitig ignorieren wir teilweise in den Nationalstaaten die Hilfsbereitschaft, die sehr, sehr deutlich selbst aus den kleinsten Regionen unserer Länder signalisiert wird. Starke Demokratie und Rechtsstaatlichkeit in allen Ländern sind Grundvoraussetzungen, um Regionen letztlich zu befähigen, mit dieser Krise in dieser Zeit auch umzugehen. Darum wollen wir ein klares Auftreten jenen Mitgliedstaaten gegenüber, die die Anerkennung der Werte von Demokratie und Rechtsstaatlichkeit verweigern. Und zum Schluss ein herzliches Dankeschön an die vielen Vertreterinnen 
aus Gemeinden, aus Kommunen. Viele von ihnen sitzen hier im Ausschuss der Regionen, die gegen die nationalen Politiken täglich Demokratie und Rechtsstaatlichkeit vor Ort durchsetzen. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to some of our members who have asked to intervene. You will have the floor for one minute each. And let me start with Anders Knappe, please. Madam President, Mr. President, dear colleagues, in my capacity as President of the Congress of the Council of Europe, uh, let me present to you some of the key findings and responses needed to draw to the appropriate conclusions and put in place the necessary legal and procedural measures to safeguard the capacity of act of municipalities, cities and regions, and to maintain the democratic legitimacy of their actions. Multi-level governance is an important key to positively respond to the crisis. When regions and local authorities, we are the national associations, were involved in rapid response task forces at national level, the response were more effective and reality proof. This response, this response provide the recentralization is not a miracle cure for the crisis. All recommendations are to make sure that any emergency measures are temporary, proportional, and introduced under democratic control. Better division of competences and means within the multi-level governance system is ensured and maintained even in times of crisis, and better coordination and consultation are established between different levels of governance. Subnational authorities are involved in decision making within emergency mechanisms as an integral part of national crisis management, including or holding or postponing elections. And Thank subnational you. authorities have access to direct funding during both the crisis management and post crisis recovery. Multi level governance increases the quality of decision and allow greater flexibility in providing solutions tailored to specific needs. Local democracy itself must be seen as a service of general interest to our societies to be upheld even in the crisis for the core Thank common you. values which I represent. Thank you for giving the, me the chance as President of the Congress of Council of Europe to address you today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The floor now to Peter Kaiser for one minute, please. The floor to Ms. Fernandez Viana, please. Sí. Estimada Presidenta de la Comisión Europea, gracias, estimados colegas. Ha quedado muy claro que, tam que también el impacto regional y la crisis ha sido muy asimétrico. Aquí, por ejemplo, en Cantabria, una, una comunidad de 500.000 habitantes no ha afectado igual que en otros lugares, que en otras regiones como Madrid o Cataluña. El impacto económico a medio plazo diferirá entre las regiones, pero es fundamental mitigar el impacto financiero en los gobiernos regionales y ayudarlos a comprometer los recursos urgentes y necesarios para ayudar a la población y a las empresas. Desde Cantabria consideramos que los gobiernos nacionales y regionales encabezarán la labor de recuperación económica incluso mediante planes de recuperación regionales y locales que probablemente incluyan el apoyo a empresas y paquetes de estímulos dirigidos a la inversión pública. Me gustaría que la Comisión Europea a la hora de evaluar los planes de recuperación que en los próximos días le harán llegar a los Estados miembros Tenga en cuenta el papel de las regiones en la salida de esta crisis y evite que este plan de recuperación pueda conducir de alguna manera a la recentralización de las políticas y de la gestión de los fondos. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much uh, and uh, happy National Day to all of our Spaniard friends and uh, uh, the Spanish members of uh, the Committee of Regions. Today is Spain's National Day. I will move on now to give the floor to Peter Kaiser for one minute, please.
Okay, so we move on to Rob Junkman, please. Okay, Ms. Dwayne Stanley, please, you have the floor. Obviously, there are some technical issues, so I move on to Ms. Svarch Kiefer, please. President, thank you for giving me the floor. President von der Leyen, a very warm welcome from my side. I am a member of the Flemish Parliament and our regional and local levels are doing their best in managing the COVID-19 crisis. They take own policy decisions and actions, but also they implement policy decided at other levels and governance. Due to pandemic, we face drastic reduction of incomes. Huge need to implement a number of ad hoc measures in the field of health protection and necessity to maintain investments to support jobs and to deliver social services, especially in the rural areas. The measures to overcome the economic and social impact of the crisis must be based on the right conclusions. The initiative of you, the core president, for a barometer report is a very important step as it represents the regional and local perspective of resilience and recovery. I am delighted to contribute to this process as core rapporteur on experiences and lessons learned by regions and cities during the COVID-19 crisis. President von der Leyen, I'm looking forward to collaborate with the Commission on this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor now to Mr. Mark Speich. Ms. Alexandra Durkiewicz, please. Mr. Piero Mauro Zanin. Mr. Juan Calabui Grul. Is there a connection problem? Mr. Gunther Platter, please. You have the floor. Can you hear us? Mr. Alberto Sirio. Buongiorno signora Presidente von der Leyen, eh, sono due le difficili sfide che la mia regione, il Piemonte, ha di fronte per il 2021. Superare l'emergenza sanitaria che l'ha vista tra le regioni più colpite d'Italia, ma anche tra quelle che oggi sono meglio posizionate per contrastare il ritorno della pandemia da Covid-19. Resta la grande emergenza economica e sociale che per una regione dalla tradizione industriale e manufatturiera come il Piemonte significa perdita di posti di lavoro e capacità produttiva, senza dire poi del comparto turistico, culturale, un settore che stava dando nuova visibilità e benessere al Piemonte e che oggi è in pericolo. La seconda sfida riguarda poi i cambiamenti climatici e i suoi effetti sul territorio 
e la voglio ringraziare il Presidente von der Leyen per il messaggio di vicinanza che nei giorni scorsi ha voluto trasmettere alla mia regione, al Piemonte, in occasione delle recenti catastrofe, delle alluvioni che hanno devastato la nostra terra e le anticipo fin d'ora che faremo richiesta insieme alla Liguria, insieme alle regioni del Pacà e del Ronalp di attivare il Fondo Europeo di Solidarietà. Entrambe queste sfide, quella sanitaria e quella ambientale, potranno essere combattute e vinte dal Piemonte solo se l'Unione Europea non farà mancare il proprio sostegno, con la solidarietà e la generosità che lo spirito della costruzione europea richiede. Grazie. Thank you very much. The floor now to Gunther Platter. Ms. Sari Rausio. Dear President for the Lion, dear President Tista uh, Costas, thank you for this debate on this very important parameter. People first, as a team. People first. So important to remember that none of us, no city, no region, no person can do all, but everyone can do something. We need definitely the common, common goal, the common objectives, but the deeds are done here in the regions, in the municipalities, in cities, together with people. Dear colleagues, this definitely is the momentum for Europe. This is the time to start to work for the next generation Europe. Greener, fairer and better Europe who is the forerunner in the world. Dear President, I want to stress the meaning and the possibilities of digitalization. During COVID crisis in the springtime, we understood how important it is to invest in digitalization. In my city, the city of Hamelina, all the children had their iPads or computers and the school went on fine, thanks to our professional teachers. This is something I really wish that we together could offer to all European children no matter in which region, in which city they live. This is building the better Europe and future for all of us. Dear colleagues, I want to encourage us all to rethink and strengthen democracy and restart Europe together. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mr. Peter Kaiser, you have the floor. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Frau Präsidentin, Herr Präsident, die Corona-Krise zeigt die Verwundbarkeit der Europäischen Union. Grenzschließungen, Reisewarnungen, Binnenmarktbeeinträchtigungen sind Auswirkungen ausschließlich nationaler Pandemieaktivitäten. Ein EU-einheitliches Vorgehen ist hinsichtlich Covid-19 genauso unverzichtbar wie bei Klimapolitik oder digitaler Transformation. Und Frau Präsidentin, ja, wir werden alles tun, um Projekte zu liefern. Dabei sind die lokalen und regionalen Gebietskörperschaften wichtige Akteure, da sie im unmittelbaren Kontakt mit den Bürgerinnen und den Bürgern stehen. Die Krise zeigt eines ganz deutlich. Europa funktioniert vor allem dann, wenn seine Regionen stark sind. Bildung, Gesundheit oder Daseinsversorgung sind wesentliche diesbezügliche Indikatoren. Ich kann Ihnen auch als Landeshauptmann von Kärnten Frau Präsidentin, in einer Region, die an Italien und Slowenien grenzt, mitteilen, dass wir in Kärnten bis heute die Krise auch deshalb so gut bewältigen konnten, weil wir mit unseren benachbarten Regionen, also auch grenzüberschreitend, in einem intensiven Austausch hinweg stehen. Wir brauchen abschließend gesagt europäische Programme wie zum Beispiel Next Generation Europe und auch die Gesinnung im Großen aber auch im Regionalen und Lokalen. Dann und nur dann wird es gut funktionieren und wir werden aus dieser Krise vielleicht auch gestärkt herausgehen. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. The floor now to Rob Jonkman, please. Rob Jonkman. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Now it's working, I think. 
Dear uh, Madam uh, President von der Leyen, results of a survey uh, accompanying uh, the barometer um, show that local government is the most trusted level of government in Europe and that Europeans expect greater involvement of local politicians in shaping European politics. The institution in which we meet today is the voice of the regions in the EU and our democratic credibility and influence on the ground no one can question. And you didn't when I hear your inspiring speech. Having this in mind, I and many other members struggle to understand why the annual budget of the Committee of the Regions is significantly smaller than of the European Economic and Social Committee. Both committees have consultative roles and we occupy the same building. Yet the COR, whose members hold a democratic mandate and are responsible for EU policy implementation, has an annual budget 41 million smaller than the EESC. And are you aware of this, uh, this uh, discrepancy? And if yes, how can this be justified? Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor now to Dwayne Stanley, please. Our colleague, Dwayne Stanley. I hope you can hear me. Yes, can you hear me, President? Go ahead, Caroline, yes. Yes, thank, thank you, dear presidents. Uh, the support given by the EU towards Ireland and its attempts to protect the Irish Protocol and the Good Friday Agreement are most welcome. The Irish Protocol is designed to protect the Good Friday Agreement. The intent of the British government to introduce the Internal Market Bill rides roughshod over the Protocol and the Good Friday Agreement. The single most important priority for all of the political parties on the island of Ireland and throughout the EU as a whole must be the protection of the Irish peace process. The introduction of a hard border in Ireland threatens to undermine the peace process. The British are aware if they introduce the Internal Market Bill that they're in clear breach of a withdrawal agreement which Boris Johnson has previously signed up to and are further aware that they are breaking international law. We commend the decision of the EU to pursue legal action against the British over this breach of international law. The political, social and economic implications of Brexit for Ireland are immense. When the Brexit crisis is viewed in conjunction with COVID-19 pandemic, the scale of the threats that Ireland faces are immense. Ireland needs funding to deal with Brexit the central bank fears that a no-deal Brexit could lead to the loss of over 100,000 jobs. Thank Further you, to this, we could witness the loss of 75% 7, of our food trade with Britain. Thank you, President. Thank you very much. The floor now to Mr. Schwarz Kiefer. Mr. Schwarz Kiefer, please. You have the floor. I give the floor now to our colleague, Mr. S Mark Spaish, please. Mark, you have the floor. Mr. Gunther Platter, please. We're experiencing some issues with uh, the connections, but this is how the corona pandemic situation is, and we need to adjust to it. So bear with us and have confidence. Miss. Hören Sie mich jetzt? Hello. Ja, sehr geehrte Frau Präsidentin, 
Geschätzter Herr Präsident, meine Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich darf Ihnen, geschätzte Kommissionspräsidentin, meine volle Unterstützung aussprechen in diesen schwierigen Monaten, die von entscheidender Bedeutung für die Entwicklung Europas und damit für uns alle ist. Corona beschäftigt uns natürlich in Tirol auch in einem besonderen Maße. Leider führen die unterschiedlichen Reisewarnungen nun aber erneut zu großer Unsicherheit bei den Menschen und insbesondere in der Wirtschaft. Deshalb muss das Entstehen eines Fleckhalteppichs in Europa vermieden werden. Wir dürfen die Wirtschaft nicht durch gegenseitige Blockaden an die Wand fahren. Wir müssen uns unbedingt gemeinsam bemühen, die sonst drohende Arbeitslosigkeit abzuwenden. Die derzeitige Situation ist mit der Situation im Frühjahr nicht vergleichbar. Vielmehr brauchen wir jetzt klare europäische Kriterien für Reisewarnungen. Diese dürfen nicht allein auf die Inzidenzzahlen abstellen. Es müssen auch andere Kriterien wie Testungsquote, Genesene im Verhältnis zu Neuerkrankten, Reproduktionszahlen, Hospitalisierungsquote und Quote der Intensivbettenbelegung etc. einbezogen werden. Ich würde bitten, geschätzte Kommissionspräsidentin, dass man das versucht, auch im Rat so zustande zu bringen, dass wir hier klare Kriterien haben, damit wir nicht jetzt auch noch die Wirtschaft in Europa an die Wand fahren. Herzlichen Dank. Danke schön. The floor now to Schwarz Kiefer, please. Is he connected? Yes. Es scheint zu funktionieren. Sehr geehrte Frau Präsidentin, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, ich bin damit völlig einverstanden, dass die größte Herausforderung für die Städte und Regionen weiterhin die Covid-19-Pandemie wird. Die wirtschaftlichen Folgen spürt man bereits. In meiner Heimatregion, im Komitat Brana Boronja in Südungarn, hat die Arbeitslosigkeit schon deutlich zugenommen. Was eine wichtige Aufgabe für die kommenden Jahre wird, dass man es nicht zulässt, dass zwischen den weniger entwickelten Regionen und den entwickelten Regionen der Unterschied größer wird. Wenn wir nur davon ausgehen, dass in den kleineren Ortschaften meiner Region es viele gibt, die von 200, 300 Euro pro Monat leben müssen, sehen wir, dass es unvorsehbare Folgen hätte, wenn der erwähnte Unterschied noch größer wäre. Unser Ziel muss sein, dass in unserem Europa alle Bürger unabhängig vom Geburtsort in Wohlstand und Freiheit leben können. Dankeschön für die Aufmerksamkeit. Dankeschön. I would uh, like to try now Piero Mauro Zanin. Presidente, buongiorno a te e a uh, Presidente van der Leyen. Credo che per affrontare meglio il problema dovuto al Covid dovremo avere un maggior coinvolgimento delle regioni e degli enti locali nei processi decisionali sia dell'Unione che delle altre istituzioni europee con maggior ruolo per il Comitato delle Regioni. Questo credo che eh, debba essere ricompreso anche eh, o nei trattati o direttamente nelle direttive, anche in, in, obbligando gli stati eh, nazionali a rispettare le autonomie. Questo anche per dare un nuovo ruolo all'Europa contro il sovranismo. E gli interventi futuri dovranno essere rivolti verso la sfida demografica, non c'è Europa senza cittadini d'Europa, e anche verso uh, la sfida alla migrazione, in quanto le regole, anche in occasione del Covid, dovranno essere regole comuni eh, ai cittadini europei, cosa che invece oggi in Italia rischiamo eh, di eh, non attuare, in quanto i migranti purtroppo eh, non sempre rispettano quelle che sono le regole eh, con, per contenere la pandemia che abbiamo noi. In un'ultima un parola si può dire che eh, l'Europa del futuro che nasce dopo il Covid deve essere un'Europa che deve sostenersi sulla eh, sussidiarietà circolare e quindi Europa, Stati, ma essenzialmente anche regioni ed enti locali. Grazie, Grazie mille. mille. I would like to give the floor now to uh, our colleague Calabuig Rul. because we have two more interventions. I would like to give the floor to Robert 
sabo. Barbara Silvia Hegedus, the last intervention, please, for this debate with President von der Leyen. For one minute. Okay. Uh, dear Madam President, dear Mr. President, Thank you for the great debate. In recent months, we have seen that the regions and local authorities have played a key role in solving uh, the epidemic situation. But the citizens of the EU don't just want to see a common burden. They would like to see an effective and opportunity for a union because sooner or later they will be, they become disillusioned with the principles set out by the EU. There's a need for regulation that provides a helping hand to member states and local governments to cooperate with each other to share their experiences in EU level two. There is a need for strong cooperation between the local and national governments in the field of the pandemic situation and accomplish development plans together as they see good examples for it in Hungary and in my city West Spain. Europe needs concrete cooperation, common goals and not ideological struggles at the level of regions and cities too. Our task is not to increase the divisions but to focus on cooperation, to protect our citizens, and to increase the economic prosperity. Thank you. And one last uh, intervention from Alexandra Dulkevich, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're connected. Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, just a few words uh, from the Damask city where Solidarity was born. Uh, current situation, COVID situation, shows how much we need solidarity, not only in Europe, connected Europe, European institutions, but also solidarity with central governments and uh, our regional and local authorities. This is something what we deeply need, not only in Poland, but as far as I heard uh, my colleagues from different countries, this is something what we deeply need. Solidarity and cooperation. Best regard from Dams. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor, for being that brief. And I would like to thank all of our uh, members, colleagues who intervened during this very important debate on the local and regional barometer uh, with the presence of uh, President von der Leyen. I would like uh, to give the floor now to a very good friend of the Committee of the Regions, uh, uh, the Vice President uh, Sefcovic, uh, who will uh, react to what uh, was heard during the debate from uh, our members. Vice President Sefcovic, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, dear Mr. President, dear Apostolos. I think that uh, Committee of, Regi of Regions has proven its resilience because uh, we are debating, discussing, despite the technical challenges which uh, clearly been there, but I think that uh, our focus on What's important for Europe, uh, for our citizens in uh, these uh, weeks and, uh, and days prevailed over the technical uh, difficulties, which just show us that what we really need in Europe is not only to be the greener, to be more resilient, but also to be truly digital so we can really use uh, uh, this uh, uh, technological equipment uh, for our better communications and the connection. First of all, I really uh, would like to uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, uh, but also the whole committee of the regions for a uh, highly valued uh, uh, report, the barometer you just uh, presented in uh, such a uh, eloquent way. And I think that it's very well, it's underlining that thrust of most of the intervention. And I think that Mayor of Dance, Madame Dukevi, just uh, said it uh, rightly. Uh, this is the time where we need uh, more than ever solidarity among our peoples, among our countries, uh, among our citizens. And therefore, 
that measure of the temperature uh, in our cities and regions which you been working on and which you provided us with was a, a very uh, crucial contribution to our uh, to our future uh, to our future work uh, Mr. Jonkman was uh, highlighting the fact that uh, regional and local authorities very often have the highest uh, political trust from the citizens. And I think it's very understandable because you are there uh, dealing uh, with uh, the issue so close to the heart of our citizens of daily basis. You are the first address, you are the first instance where they, uh, where they want to solve the problem or when they want to point uh, to the possible solutions and therefore your input, your contribution and close collaboration with the European uh, Commission is so uh, important. Uh, several of uh, the uh, members have uh, been uh, highlighting the issue which unfortunately is again uh, on the top of the, the political agenda and this is COVID-19 crisis. We see that uh, how this virus is again negatively uh, affecting uh, our lives and how this has to push us not only in, adopted, uh, uh, in adopting right decisions but to prepare uh, better uh, for uh, the future. Madame Tuto at the beginning of our uh, discussion was highlighting the importance to uh, support as much as we can to, uh, our frontline uh, workers. Uh, Mr. Platter was advocating more coordination if it comes uh, to travel and health uh, uh, advisory and uh, Madame Chauvelier, she's working on her uh, report on lessons learned from the COVID. I think all this would be very important uh, for our uh, future work. Just to inform you that uh, tomorrow morning I'll be traveling to Luxembourg. We will have another session of the uh, General Affairs Council where usually the Europe ministers are uh, discussing the current and the future issues. We will be preparing the next European Council, next European Summit, but at the same time we also will be discussing how can we bring more and better coordination, especially if it comes to the measures, if it comes to the uh, travel restrictions and if it comes to the methodologies which uh, uh, we have to work hard that it would be as similar as possible so our citizens who are uh, working in different parts of Europe or traveling would be better informed and it would be uh, easier uh, to understand uh, what the advisories are telling uh, to uh, all of us. Our president Ursula von der Leyen was highlighting your important role in shaping future policies uh, of the European uh, Union. Of course now we are working hard uh, with the Council, the Member States and the European Parliament to finalize not only the next multi-annual financial perspective, but also next generation EU, which is a new instrument, which is a facility without any precedent uh, in the history, with only one aim, to bring the necessary financial support where it's needed the most, to modernize the Europe, to kickstart the, the economy, and to also work on all those structural deficiencies which have been accumulating in uh, Europe, in our member states uh, over the year. And we hope uh, that we will have uh, the final deal as soon as possible because we know how our regions, how our cities, how our member states need this support of 1.8 uh, uh, trillion euros. And uh, you heard our president well what uh, we definitely uh, expect and would prefer in the European Commission would be the good interaction between the national governments uh, and the regional and local representatives, uh, representatives. The inclusion of the social partners uh, into the preparation and later on also executions of these national uh, recovery uh, plans because we have one in a lifetime uh, opportunity to really modernize the Europe, to get most of the green and digital transition and uh, to really bring new elements in place so the resilience of our economies, of our democratic uh, systems would be much stronger uh, than uh, it is uh, right now. And uh, I think the examples which have been mentioned by Mrs. Uh, uh, Landergren or Mr. was concerning the, uh, the, the, the incentive which we have to put uh, thanks to these new instruments on new skills 
for green jobs uh, like batteries or for digital uh, transformation like the field of uh, artificial intelligence are very important and we have to make sure that we would not only adjust uh, the skill sets of our people in Europe, but also help them to acquire them through the adjusted uh, curricular programs at the universities or special uh, vocational uh, training. The green transition is not an uh, easy one. Therefore, we introduced the Just Transition Fund, uh, which should help uh, uh, those regions which would be affected most uh, by the transition, be it uh, former coal mining regions or be it the regions where the heavy energy consumption industries are located. And for that, uh, of course, we need a good project. We need a good plans. And I know that you are working on the ground and you would be the best addressee on our request to help us to identify what should be the projects, what should be the plans uh, for these uh, concrete regions which will have uh, to go through this uh, very demanding transition in a, in a fairest possible way, where nobody is left behind and we, where we can jump uh, from very often the black industry, like the coal mining was, into the green one, like the battery production or the smart mobility technology development uh, is a lot of you have been addressing the issue of resilience i just presented uh, uh, like a month ago my first uh, ever strategic foresight report which was all about the resilience how important it is how uh, we have to develop uh, new uh, measures uh, to monitor our progress and how we would like to use uh, the data to measure what the resi uh, resilience really means for health, for green policies, for digital, for our geopolitical positioning of the European Union of this, uh, on this global, uh, in, the, in this global competition, because we see how fierce it is. And there I also would like to invite you to co cooperate with us, to have a look at these resilient uh, prototype dashboards uh, if you would like to improve them, if you would like to bring additional data, because that would be extremely helpful coming from somebody like you who have field experience, who are really on uh, the front line. Uh, to conclude, dear Mr. President and uh, honorable members of the Committee of Regions, I uh, feel really honored that you invited me to participate in your discussion. Of course, as I would say all of us, I would uh, prefer the physical meeting when we can see each other, when we can talk to each other, when we can have uh, our uh, side discussions in the corridors. I hope that this time will uh, come soon because I think all of us uh, long uh, for that and we cannot uh, wait until I would say this normalcy, how to meet, how to discuss, how to shape our policies uh, for the future could be done in physical presence and from uh, person to person contacts. But until this is the case, we have to use every available technology at our disposal. And therefore, I'm uh, very much obliged to you, Mr. President, for excellent presentation of your report, for the hard work uh, your members have uh, been doing and looking forward to our future frequent contacts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President Shevchovic. It's uh, really an honor and uh, a privilege to be collaborating with you during all these uh, uh, previous time and I'm sure that we have a lot of things to do together in the future um, and thank you very much for your uh, reaction to this uh, debate and to um, what our members have raised. I would also like to thank uh, President von der Leyen for her participation in this first annual uh, local and regional barometer, which we presented today. Uh, I would say that at this point we can conclude our debate on the barometer.